Hello, my name is Benjamin Hart. I'm an American attorney and the managing director of Integrity Legal here in Bangkok, Thailand. As the title of this video suggests, we're discussing tax policy here in Thailand yet again, and we're specifically discussing it in the context of retirees here in Thailand. There's been a lot of, well, there's been a lot of talk swirling around the expat community. I get it, people are kind of confused. And quite honestly, we're still awaiting further clarification ourselves. At what we know at this point is basically Thailand has regularized its tax system. It's in line with basically, this, they're doing things the same way virtually every other country around the world deals with things in line with a double tax, you know, in line with their double tax treaty obligations. But Thailand had this situation where you could defer and mitigate tax liability by waiting to bring money into the country after a certain duration of time, depending on when the calendars fell between the time money was accrued and money was brought into Thailand. Not going to go into deep analysis on that because we've talked about that in a lot of other videos. But one thing I have noticed is there's a lot of misconceptions. Quite honestly, I hate using the word misinformation, disinformation, because those terms have become, quite honestly, so politically weaponized lately. But the fact of the matter is, there's just inaccurate information that floats around the ether that is the internet. And where possible, I'd like to try to provide clarification or correction in order to give people a better idea of what's actually going on. Part of the reason for forming this channel, creating this channel and doing these videos, it was, it was all based on the fact that I started doing this primarily talking about U.S. immigration, some Thai immigration, and it has evolved over time and broadened out quite substantially. But the reason I originally built, you know, started this channel and started making these videos was because, you know, for years I had been here in Thailand and I had just seen constant inaccurate information across forums. I'd see it, you know, in Q and A's across the internet about, you know, matters here in Thailand or information that was outdated. And, you know, as we saw recently, I had some outdated notions that got updated. I corrected myself on this channel. You know, at the end of the day, the purpose of this channel is to try to provide as much clarification as possible. To that end, I thought of making this video after reading a recent comment on our channel, quoting directly, <clears throat> unless you hold a business visa as a foreigner, you cannot work. That's a misnomer. I, I'm making another video separately uh, to go into that. If you have a business visa, then you're registered as a taxpayer, also a misnomer. I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. Quoting further, minimum income set by the Thai government at 50,000 Thai baht, also a misnomer. I'll get to that in a minute. Therefore, a taxpayer, a contribution to the Social Security Fund, the Social Fund too. However, you'll not qualify for the state pension. Therefore, all... Therefore, all non-working retirees are currently outside of the tax system in Thailand, not your own country. To add the retiree in the Thai tax system can and will emanate visa, I think they meant visa via your visa documents, via your visa documents. Quite honestly, this whole comment is convoluted and I don't even really understand the thrust of it. That said, the component parts in it I want to comment on because... I, 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 this is probably a bit more pre prevalent a presumption, and I, I think it should be sort of dispelled. So all non-working retirees are currently outside of the tax system in Thailand. Not true. As we've discussed in other videos, uh, there was the misconception floating around that if you don't sign up for a Thai tax ID number, you're not liable for Thai taxes. Not true as well. You know, just because you don't work in Thailand you may or may not, you know, does not necessarily dictate that you're not liable for Thai taxes. That's why this change in announcement is so important. Because if you accrue overseas income or if you accrue overseas gains, capital gains, for example, you know, unearned income, interest, something of that nature, dividends, royalties in a, for example, a trademark, copyright, or patent context, Again, it can be earned income, unearned income. In the past, however it was accrued, if you waited till the next calendar year from the year it was accrued to bring it into Thailand, you could mitigate tax liability. You could, you could avoid tax liability. Now that's going away. January 1, 2024, that's no longer going to be the case. And 
So just because you're a non-working retiree in Thailand, that doesn't necessarily mean anything. If you've accrued a capital gain abroad and you bring that money into Thailand, then it's possible you could have tax liability associated with that. Now, as per usual, it's all going to be fact dependent, circumstantially dependent based on the underlying facts in a given case. But that said, just to sort of say, if you're not working and non-working retirees in Thailand, not subject to Thai tax liability, that's not true. Again, it's going to depend on circumstances. At the end of the day, what we do know that's going to come about from this change in rules is the fact that that, that may not be true. You know, in the past, yeah, you could wait around and bring it in later, bring money in later and not have the liability. Now that's not going to be the case. So again, just because you're not working in Thailand as a retiree doesn't mean you can't have Thai tax liability depending on how long you've been in Thailand and depending on the nature of some sort of accrued gain. So again, be very, very careful when reading anything on the internet about this because, again, it's very much based on the specific facts of a given case, and it's also not fully clear exactly how this is going to play out. So until we have more clarification and until, you know, I, for example, in my situation, I see a given client's fact pattern, that's the only way I can determine whether or not, well, when I say I, but we here at the firm could determine whether or not tax liability may or may not exist. So this sort of black and white analysis, quite honestly, layperson analysis of this, you're going to go really wrong trying to follow that because that's not how the law as a practical matter and in, in reality actually works.